Hello everyone. Welcome back. Uh, so uh, in this session, we are going to see ARM uh, looping constructs. So this is your module two again, uh, chapter uh, six, section six point uh, six. Okay. So this is the uh, last topic in this uh, particular module. So uh, let's proceed. Looping constructs. So in this particular uh, topic, we are going to see how we can uh, use uh, looping. Yeah, different optimization techniques uh, in looping okay so first is uh, to use decremented loops so uh, always keep in mind that uh, uh, decrementing uh, uh, loops are always better than uh, the incremental loops uh, so let me just uh, uh, briefly tell you why is that the case so let us say we want to do something like this right so zero uh, uh, to say n okay if you want to do an up count oh, like say i plus plus so then what will happen is uh, you will start from zero okay and then you will go all the way to one two three and let's say for, for now let us say this number is 64 n is 64 all the way to uh, 64 right and then at that point you, every every end of the loop uh, you are going to compare uh, the value okay of this 64 so there is going to be a comparison instruction uh, and then uh, with uh, 64 your value of i with 64 right so this is what is going to happen and uh, based on that uh, you will do a branch okay so branch uh, on equal to or branch greater than less than whatever condition it is right uh, so with this uh, what is happening is you are going to use an extra comparison uh, instruction and another branch instruction uh, because you are going to uh, up count to a particular value that uh, of your interest uh, instead uh, if we use a down counter right let us see what happens in the case of uh, using a down counter so uh, we still have 64 but then now we'll, we'll we'll start with 64 and then we'll come to zero or 63 right 63 down to zero now the advantage of this is that uh, you don't need a, a comparison instruction okay so you you can just you can decrement it so you can do the subtract by one and then you can keep decrementing it and at some point this value will become zero right so then you can do like branch on zero or branch greater than or equal to simply you can do that okay uh, based on your flag that is set okay so we are going to make use of the conditional flags that are going to get set right so based on that you you can avoid this one comparison instruction okay so imagine for every single loop you are going to save one instruction correct so now if it's if you're running 63 uh, loops uh, then you're going to save 63 instructions correct right? so now because of this uh, your decremented loops are always better because it saves an instruction for every loop okay so that's why we are going to specially uh, focus on your uh, decremented loops uh, but you don't have to worry when you're writing a c program uh, because your compiler is going to take care of all these things but anyway it's better to keep in mind uh, when you're uh, writing your code especially when you're doing it in assembly this uh, really makes a lot of difference okay so now let us see uh, what these decremented uh, loops and different varieties of that are so first one is uh, we are going to uh, do a decremented loop from n to 1 okay so from n to 1 uh, inclusive of both n and 1 okay and the loop terminates with i equals to 0 okay and then uh, so let's see this uh, so it's going to be implemented like this so first move n to i and then uh, this is your actual loop body uh, so you're just going to so so whatever instructions you need to do in the loop you will do here and then finally uh, what you're going to do is uh, subtract uh, one from i and then uh, if it's greater than then you loop back otherwise uh, you exit out of the loop okay, it's very uh, fairly straightforward uh, so if you see uh, what is the overhead cost for this loop it's going to be uh, one uh, uh, cycle for subtract and then three cycles for branch so overall it's going to be four cycles uh, of uh, overhead cost and uh, now coming to uh, 
a, 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 a variant of this you are going to do from n minus 1 to 0 i think we are used to this kind of thing right? especially when we want to uh, access arrays uh, it's always better if we have uh, loops from n minus 1 to 0 so that you can directly index your array so in that case all you need to do is move the first subtract out okay so make uh, a, a subtract n minus uh, n with 1 so it becomes n minus 1 automatically you enter the loop and then uh, you do the uh, looping here uh, it's, it's the same thing the only difference is uh, now we have to check if uh, branch greater than or equal to okay instead of branch greater than as we did here it's going to be branch greater than or equal to okay so uh, and then uh, so the other uh, variant is if let's say if you want to uh, do from 0 to uh, n by 3 right or something like this here we are only going to do n by 3 uh, loops then uh, you don't have to uh, uh, do a division every uh, uh, loop right every iteration you don't have to do n by 3 because division is a very expensive instruction okay and it, it it's not like fixed uh, cycles for division it's a variable uh, cycles for uh, division so uh, so you can avoid this division by simply subtracting 3 okay so you you can just do n minus 3 or, or i minus 3 sorry i minus 3 every uh, iteration so automatically it will your your loop will become n by 3 so this is one way you can uh, play around with uh, so that you can avoid this division okay so otherwise it's still the same as your other uh, uh, loop in those steps okay all right unrolled counted loops this is a very very important uh, topic and uh, we are going to see this topic uh, using this mem set example okay so uh, in this we are going to use a, a customized my mem set uh, function so mem set is a standard uh, c uh, uh, built in function it's similar to your malloc and calloc right so what it does is it takes uh, a character pointer or or a, or a pointer that points to one address uh, that can store characters and then it takes a uh, number of uh, characters uh, okay and then what we are going to do is starting from this uh, address where s points to we are going to start filling n uh, bytes or n characters and uh, that character is going to be specified by this c okay we are going to write whatever the c has right so that character we are going to fill it for n uh, bytes starting from uh, s okay uh, you may wonder why uh, this uh, is specified as int c and not character c we will see that in a bit okay so uh, for now i mean for but just for your understanding you just uh, um, uh, keep in mind that c is uh, nothing but a character that we are going to write so we are going to write n characters starting from address s okay now in this uh, the first task is to make sure the uh, uh, the uh, address is aligned so what do you mean by alignment so let's take a quick example of this uh, snapshot of your memory uh, so your memory uh, uh, will be organized something uh, like this right so here uh, so this is address 00 or in binary it is 0 0 0 0 0 okay so that so that's this byte okay so when you when you say i want to store uh, a word into location 00 it's going to write four uh, bytes right it's going to write four bytes or it's going to write one full word or 32 bits into this particular location okay so automatically when you say store it's going to write a word or a, or 32 uh, bits okay so uh, or four words uh, sorry four uh, bytes into this location uh, so now similarly if you if you see uh, if you take an arbitrary uh, point uh, so let's say if you, if you want to uh, uh, write into so this 8 location 8 so it's going to write into all four bytes of this uh, 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 locations starting from uh, 1000 0 to uh, 100 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 okay so this this is your uh, 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 1 0 
and then followed by that uh, you have uh, whichever byte index it is okay so you're going to write like that now uh, now let's come back to uh, uh, what alignment uh, means now if your s whatever s the address you are pointing to uh, is here which is like the end address is 00, zero then you are going to write four bytes okay and one shot here if you simply do str into 00, zero then automatically you are going to write all these four bytes otherwise let us say you want to write uh, uh, from say s dash so which starts from here right so for uh, these four locations then you you need you cannot do it in one store instruction you have to do uh, multiple store instructions so in this particular case you can do like a store half word and then store half word here two store half words you have to do otherwise you will have to do four uh, individual uh, uh, byte writes str bytes right so byte writes you have to individually uh, write the bytes into the locations okay so why we are doing it is because uh, if we align your memory then uh, you can simply do with one write you can write four bytes otherwise you will have to do individually worst case right so you will have to do every single byte so uh, every uh, store will have one one uh, uh, instruction for this okay so uh, so so when, when we say alignment what we are trying to do here is uh, let us say you have this s dash okay so your s dash points to this particular location okay this this particular location so then uh, starting from here you are going to write uh, say n number of bytes right so now what we will do is we will not do individual byte writes because that is very very time consuming okay and it's a very inefficient way of coding we'll see in a bit why is that the case okay uh, what we are planning to do now is you will just write these two locations this one zero and one one right so these two locations you will just do store byte okay now what has happened is your rest of your memory has become aligned right so you'll you'll start uh, writing uh, stores so that's the idea okay so now to do this we are going to uh, 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 take the following approach we are going to uh, uh, have a three step uh, or three sections uh, of our code we are, which, with which we are going to do this okay so the first section uh, what we are trying to do is first align okay so as we just saw we will try to align the uh, array uh, and the second uh, uh, so okay that, that, that's uh, yeah okay so till when we should align so we, we have a small threshold okay something called as a threshold uh, before which we will say that we can uh, do uh, like uh, byte wise stores if uh, the number the n right if number is greater than a specified threshold we'll see what this threshold value can be uh, then we will say that uh, it's a little bit larger so we will not do individual byte but then rather we will do like uh, a word right or like four bytes at a time we will write okay or in other words it's like full stores right so uh, we will write so that's the first section second section what we are going to do is we are going to specify another threshold t2 so with this threshold what we are going to do is we will uh, see if the n value is very very large let us say it's more than uh, 128 or like uh, several hundreds of bytes then again it is not very efficient to write uh, uh, one word at a time okay so rather what we have learned in earlier uh, uh, chapter right like bulk writes so store multiples so we will do we will make use of store multiples and then we will start writing uh, uh, using that so that will also save a lot of uh, uh, time for us okay so that's the idea so uh, so basically we will uh, uh, divide uh, our program into three parts so one is first we will do alignment okay so alignment is nothing but we will just do uh, a few byte writes to align our memory and after that we will uh, what we will do is we will see if the n value is very big if it is very big we will do bulk writes okay otherwise what we will do is we will uh, write the remaining bytes as full bytes and uh, finally we will finish it with uh, whatever is pending right with one or two bytes again which is uh, uh, 
uh, which are the last part of the uh, memory blocks okay so we'll quickly go over the example so that we will uh, understand this better okay so here is uh, the uh, code that we are going to see now okay so uh, before going into this let's look at this uh, uh, memory uh, 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 structure so what has uh, uh, we, we can divide our uh, uh, entire uh, locations that we are interested into these parts right so initially what we are pointing to your s can point to something like this right but we cannot do a full write here correct so we can we have to write byte uh, one byte at a time only until we align correct so till we uh, align so we have to first uh, three bytes we have to write manually okay and after that all these right what we can do is we can do a bulk write okay we can do bulk writes either uh, in terms of uh, like 128 bytes at a time or even four bytes at a time so depending on how we are going to do we'll do bulk writes the end portion of it right so end portion of it there's going to be a remaining portion where it is not we are not we will again not be able to write full bytes so we will be writing individual bytes in these portions okay so that's how we are going to do so we are going to divide it into three sections and uh, we are going to uh, implement uh, this particular strategy okay so let's quickly see uh, go over this uh, code and uh, try to understand how it is done first part is uh, in, in this section is uh, we have s c and n all these are our parameters that we store it in r0 r1 and r2 respectively and then we have a bunch of registers uh, r3 to r12 so where we are just going to make copies of c1 through c7 okay why we will do it again we will tell uh, we'll, we'll see it in a bit okay and uh, now we will jump into the uh, actual function my mem set function so this is the first section of the code so what did we see in the first section we are going to align the array okay so how it is done okay it's it's very intuitive so how we are going to do it is first compare n with a threshold t1 so what we said was we will check with one we'll, we'll specify one t1 how we come up with the value t1 we will see but again we will come up with a, a, a t1 threshold and if the number of bytes to write is lesser than this uh, t1 then we will not uh, strain ourselves to align or do anything we will simply just uh, write single bytes okay so we, we will not have to align uh, okay so we can simply write individual bytes so that's what we are going to do here so we'll compare it with n because n is very very small right there's no we, we are not going to spend more time in that so what we'll do is b c c carry clear and uh, we will jump to or we will branch to a mem set one byte block so it, it comes in the uh, very end of the program so we will branch to uh, this portion of the uh, program okay so uh, uh, this this is the case if your n is a very small number now otherwise otherwise what will happen what we need to know is how misaligned these uh, uh, this s address is okay so the uh, how we can do this so if we what we have to do is s is an address correct so this is your s s is an address all we need to do is check the last two bits of this address okay so that's what we are trying to get so we will do and s of your s with immediate value 3 okay so 3 is 1 1 right so if you do and of uh, s with this 1 1 what you will do is you will just extract the last two bits of this s now if the result is 0 when will it be 0 only when your ss the last two bits of ss is zero if it is zero then and s will uh, uh, will give you zero and then it will set the flag otherwise it will not set the flag correct now if it is zero then it means it is already aligned which means that if s is pointing to this uh, location then it is already aligned then you don't have to do any alignment so then you will branch to aligned so you will jump to this part of the code otherwise then you will have to align then how are we going to align that it's done as follows first we need to calculate how much bytes are there until alignment 
it's done like this so once we uh, uh, we know this uh, and right so c c1 c1 is nothing but whatever the last two bits are let us say that it's something like this so s is pointing to this not this now okay so let us say s is misaligned misaligned and it is pointing to this particular uh, location starting from here we are going to start writing right so then this will be 0 and 1 so the and output will be 0 1 okay and then this branch uh, will not branch so now you come here okay so what you will do is you will subtract 1 from 4 okay so 4 you need 4 bytes for alignment correct so how far are you from alignment it's nothing but you do a subtraction 4 minus 1 3 which means that you need three bytes to align okay so it's a very uh, intuitive calculation so you do four minus whatever number you're pointing to that will give you number of bytes for you to get aligned okay so now after this so now you have computed you need to write three bytes for you to align now coming to the next uh, instruction what you're going to do is subtract n minus c1 c1 is nothing but this value correct whatever your address last two bits are pointing to that's your c1 now that minus n minus c1 you will have to subtract so why you are doing this is because those numbers you are going to add individually correct hmm? so now let us say that you are going to have this uh, n okay n equals to n minus c1 c1 is now c1 has the number of bytes that you are going to write now okay so you need three bytes to align okay so now you will subtract three from n1 okay because this total value is this two total value is n now you are writing these three bytes individually so your n has now become n minus three correct so that's what you're doing here Next, what you are doing is C1, compare C1 and 2. Why we are doing this? It's again, it's a very uh, nice uh, way of uh, uh, implementing this. So, what you are trying to do is, you are individually writing, right? For sure, you need to write one byte, okay? Because misalignment, there is minimum one byte misalignment. Hmm? So, you will compulsory, you will, you will have to write one, okay? The misalignment can either be either one byte misalignment 2 byte misalignment or 3 byte misalignment one of these if it is 4 byte it's not misaligned it is already aligned correct so your misalignment can only be 1 byte 2 bytes or 3 byte so if definitely you are going to write one so you do just a comparison c1 with 2 and then you are going to see here okay you are going to store unconditionally you will store one byte okay using post indexing you are storing it here so you unconditionally you will store one because definitely there is one misalignment so you will store now you, you have compared it with one you are comparing this with two right so if there is one misalignment what will happen is let us say there is one misalignment then compare one with two so compulsorily you will write one byte now when you come here you are going to do greater than or equal to okay so this condition will not be satisfied so you will skip this again you will come here greater than again it will not be satisfied you will skip this so you will just write one byte let us say your misalignment is not one it is two if it is two then you compare two and two right so compulsorily you will write one for sure next you come here if it is greater than or equal to now equal to is set right so now two and two are equal so now you will do the second right also then you will come to the third part greater than no, it's not greater than right it's only equal so then you will skip this so you have already written two now let us say you have your misalignment is three bytes your misalignment is three bytes then three and two right so compulsorily you will write one and then you will greater than or equal to yes it is greater than then you will write this again here you will check greater than yes it is greater than so you will do all three rights so so very it's a very nice way you you, you can just put these three statements uh, you can use the conditional uh, 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 execution here and then you can write one two or three bytes depending on how much ever is your misalignment okay so that's pretty much about your uh, uh, 
uh, your alignment how you align your bytes and you have now also updated your n value right so you know how much uh, uh, are pending to write okay so now before you proceed right in your aligned you all you start with this okay currently you have c right c i said c is a character correct c is a character character means it takes only one byte of ascii correct okay so now what you are doing is in this particular thing you are doing or c comma c comma c lsl 8 in other words so this has c initially this register this register whatever register you are storing uh, this right so your r1 this has c here character rest of it all is all zero only because it's just one byte of ascii correct but now what you are doing is you are doing an or with the lsl of 8 so what you're doing is you shift this by 8 okay it will become c0 okay and then you will do r of this if you do r of this this will become what c c now okay now again what you're doing the next step you are shifting this by 16 okay so this portion you are shifting it this becomes c c zero zero now you are doing r of this again so now it will become cc so in other words what you are doing here is that you are copying the same character to the other bytes of this register as well so this register is now cc cc whatever value whatever character you have right same character you have it multiple times so that when you do one store when you just do one store you would have already written four characters otherwise you will have to do one byte at a time right so to overcome that you will do four bytes at a time which is just if you do you use simply str then you automatically you have written four characters okay so that's the reason why you are doing these two or okay so now we come to the second section in the second section what we are trying to do is we are going to fix another threshold t2 okay uh, so t2 in general let's say if t2 is greater than or equal to 128 meaning if it's a very large or bulk writes if you want to do bulk writes right so we can just do it at one shot using store multiples okay so that's the idea so you're going to do uh, that exactly here okay so uh, before proceeding we, we will see what, how we are doing this so we are going to see compare the value of n with t2 if the value is not bulk if it's not more than 120 if it's just a smaller number okay so then it's better we write uh, single stores not use multiple stores right so then you branch to uh, mem set four byte block when you say four byte block it's nothing but it's uh, one uh, word at time right it's simple it's same as storing not as normal store str okay so if not so which means that it is a bulk right so if we have n value which is very large then we are going to do something so what we are going to first do is we are going to simply save the uh, registers to stack okay so just uh, as a uh, backup okay whatever value they are already holding you're storing it in stack because we are going to use rest of the registers for current computation okay and then what you're going to do is move c to c1 c to c2 c to c3 we are going to do from from uh, uh, we are going to copy the content of c to all registers okay already your c register c what what does it have it, it has c c c c right it's actually it's actually 32 uh, uh, bits okay it's four uh, uh, characters already okay it's four bytes already now you're going to copy the same thing to your c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 and c7 okay so totally including your c you have c and then you have c1 to c7 okay so totally you have eight words okay you have eight words eight into four bytes equals to 32 bytes you have okay you have 32 bytes of values in your registers now okay so now what you're going to do is you're going to do a looping and we saw how to do the looping right so you do the subtract n n minus 128 we are going to do 128 bytes at a time okay so how we are going to do this we are going to do it like this okay so the enter into the loop 
so in initially you just do n equals to n minus 128 then you do store multiple increment after okay so and then uh so so what you do is c to c8 each one is eight words correct this is eight words and then you do it four times eight fours are 32 words okay so this is uh, in other words this is 32 bytes okay and this is 32 bytes this is 32 bytes this is 32 bytes okay which means that 32 64 and then with these two again it's become 64 64 128 so total it has become 128 bytes so you have 128 bytes of store multiple bulk storage you are doing okay and then to continue with the loop you are again doing n minus 128 and then branch greater than you will loop back here okay now what will happen in the in the case right so in the, in the end you will not have uh, this condition satisfied right like it, it may not be aligned so we saw that uh, the last portion was something like this right so these are all the values that we have written and then there was a portion pending like this right so this is not aligned okay so this may not be divisible by 128 in that case what will happen is your n will become negative correct n minus 128 will become negative number so if that is the case what you will do is you will come out of the loop because branch greater than will still fail okay so then we will come out of the loop and then you add n to 128 okay and then you restore the context got it so it's a very uh, nice uh, way to uh, uh, do a bulk uh, uh, storage okay so now we come to the uh, section 3 and the final section of this particular uh, memset example uh, so in this what we have done so far is that we have first aligned it in section 1 and then we have uh, written individual bytes for aligning after alignment what we have done is we have copied the contents of register uh, uh, that has the character right into multiple other registers eight uh, registers and we have done 128 uh, stores and loops of 128 stores okay so and then after that we have something remaining which means that uh, we have something lesser than 128 uh, bytes to be filled now okay so instead of filling that one remaining 128 uh, or lesser than 128 bytes single byte at a time we will do four bytes at a time in other words we will just do normal store str stores right uh, not multiple stores we'll just do one store at a time but not again uh, not store byte this is store str so again it is uh, similar to how we did the uh, did it previously now instead of 128 now it has become 4 that's all that's the only change uh, otherwise it's the same okay uh, but here we will have your uh, uh, subtract ge with s so you are going to set the flag and then you are going to loop back okay it's very similar to how we did earlier again final loop it will become uh, a negative value then you will come back you add uh, 4 to the uh, n value Okay, so that it's not negative so you 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 got back your end whatever is residual end right so that you will have uh, now remaining one so it can be three right if it is four then it will so it will exactly get divisible by uh, this and you'll be uh, you would have stored uh, all the values but otherwise uh, the remainder will be either three two or one correct one of these three two or one so the the, the remaining the three two or one that you will do uh, by writing individual bytes it's again very similar to this instead of now four you will do one okay it's again the logic is still the same okay so you loop back and then you write individual bytes whatever bytes are remaining you will do individual bytes and finally you will uh, you do uh, you will copy the link register to pc so that you can return okay so that brings us to the end of this particular code now what is remaining is your uh, uh, analysis okay so now we are done with uh, going through the code now what we need to do is we have to know we have to analyze this particular code and see why is this beneficial is it worth it at all okay so now if we take a look at it uh, your n is now nothing but uh, it can be written like this in this equation here n h is nothing but your number of loops you have uh, done to write bulks of 128 okay you have written 128 bytes at a time right like bulk of 128 bytes at a time 
number of times you have done that plus number of times you have done uh, four bytes at a time so this is nm and then you have done individual writes right individual bytes also you have done whatever is residue you have done individual byte writes so that is nl so your total n is nothing but 128 nh plus 4 nm plus nl this is four bytes at a time 128 bytes at a time and one byte at a time right so now your uh, the only thing is your nm is between 0 and 32 okay otherwise and then your nl is 0 and 4 why is this is because you always you do it in the in those multiples okay you're doing multiples of 32 and multiples of 4 right so that's why now when you do this uh, 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 calculation so in appendix d you can find how much each instruction takes for example your add subtract all these alu instruction take one cycle your branch takes three cycles and if it's a store multiple uh, when you're storing n uh, words at a time it takes n cycles okay based on these uh, you have come up you can come up with uh, different uh, you, you can come up with these equations okay and when you have you, you you can split this entire algorithm into three cases your case one your case two and then your case three okay case one is when you have very small value of n where that n value is lesser than your t1 initially we saw right if your n value is lesser than t1 then no need of aligning okay so in that case when you when you just do it you will have to do only one byte at a time correct so if that is the case then the complexity in terms of your n uh, h n m l n is this and similarly for case 2 this is when you do uh, uh, one word at a time okay so this is writing one byte at a time this is writing one word at a time okay one word at a time when you write that then this is your complexity and finally the case where your uh, n is very large it's bigger than even t2 okay so then you you will do 128 bytes at a time okay or 32 words at a time okay so this is or this is nothing this is four words right this four bytes four bytes at a time one byte four byte at a time or 128 byte at a time so these are the complexities uh, or the cycles taken for these uh, uh, cases now if with this what are we going to understand right so we let's try to put a small chart and see how uh, we can understand this if you look at this chart when uh, when you have when you write only one uh, few few bytes if you have only few bytes to write right which means that if you go for case one your n is very very small okay well, it, your n is smaller than t1 then you see that case one is best okay you don't have to write um, uh, multiple uh, words or 128 uh, or bulk writes is not needed okay clearly your uh, case one which is this is your one byte at a time right this is one or uh, four bytes at a time right this is four bytes at a time right and this is 128 bytes at a time right okay in this case uh, your uh, one byte is uh, clearly winning okay it takes the least number of cycles the moment your nm becomes one okay so there is also two other factors z l and z m so these are nothing but the overheads okay z l and z m are the overheads for example uh, when you when, when let us say that uh, your nl right so it does not go into the loop so then you still incur some overhead correct then you will go through this zl okay and similarly for the other loop you have zm so these are the uh, loop overhead you uh, so which means that your overhead will become one even though your nl is zero you will still have one uh, overhead if your zl is zero then the overhead is part of this nl itself okay so then it, 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 it they, these are that these are just uh, uh, what to say they are mutually exclusive meaning if nl is uh, zero zl will be one if nl is one your zl will be zero similarly your nm and zm it works like that okay so in this case what has happened is if your nm is one okay and then your zm is uh, zero uh, okay so let us say uh, yeah nm is one and nl is zero 
okay n l is uh, your uh, you're not writing bytes you're just writing one uh, uh, word at time or four bytes at a time then this only one case where it uh, is failing it's because of the overhead uh, your case one is still good your case two or writing four byte uh, at a time fails it's very very marginal but after this right every other writes you see when nm is more than is one or more okay so then in that case you will have your case two clearly doing better than your case one which means you write four bytes at a time it is better than writing one byte at a time okay every single case you are seeing that this is better it has fewer cycles which means it is better and similarly when you have nh equals to one okay which means your you you have your n very very large you start doing bulk transfers bulk transfer always wins okay when you have large value of n then clearly you should not go for single byte writes or you should not go for four byte writes rather you should only go for 128 uh, byte writes okay so that's what this says so you clearly see that when the moment you your nh becomes one or which means that your n is more than your threshold t2 you should always go for case 3 okay which is nothing but you you your uh, bulk writes okay so now you to compare if you plot it as a graph you see here that how initially your case 1 was winning and later case 2 was winning see case 3 is still bad here because when you do when you try to do bulk writes you only go through overhead okay so in this case you you only you see it's clearly it is lesser than uh, uh, i mean your, your case 3 is more than your case 1 okay so for lower values of n but slowly as your n is uh, more and more it is beyond the thresholds right you see how how steep this grows this is case 1 when you when you when your n is large and when you do one byte at a time see how how steep how uh, fast this curve grows and similarly if you write uh, uh, one uh, word at a time or four bytes at a time it's better than your case one but still it is steep but when you do 128 uh, writes at a time look at how uh, 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 how less uh, steep it is like it's it's growing slowly right so clearly from this graph we can see that when your n value is large it is always better to go for your bulk writes that will save a lot of time so look at the number of cycles that you are saving here okay if you had simply done uh, a byte writes right so then you would have lost these many cycles okay so since we are doing optimization we are doing so there are two levels of optimization we have done so one is bulk writes the other one is your uh, byte uh, or word word writes four bytes at a time writes so you have unrolled your loops uh, multiple times so one is you have unrolled your loops to align the other one is you have unrolled your loops to capture the bulk writes the other one is you have unrolled the loops to support four bytes at a time okay so from this analysis right so we can uh, uh, we can actually come up with the value for t1 and t2 so t1 set to 5 and t2 set to 128 yields the best cycle counts okay so currently we have just assumed t1 t2 to be variable right so but uh, further analysis we can come to know that with this two values 5 and 128 yields the best count okay okay so now uh, we'll come to multiple nested loops okay so in this this is the next topic so here we are going to see uh, how many loop counters we need let us take matrix multiplication example we have three loops right three uh, nested loops but how many variables do we need we can actually use just one variable okay so how we are going to do that is something like this we are going to address the uh, array like this a of i comma j we are going to address it like a plus 4 into i into t plus j okay with this indexing with just one uh, so I, I can just use one counter to do this okay so the count will have this 32 bytes right so what i am going to do is i am going to split it into four uh, three parts okay and i am going to store the individual counts here that's all so with just one counter value i can do this okay 
So this is the C code, uh, no, a, a standard matrix multiplication C code. What we are trying to do is we are going to do uh, uh, A equals to B cross C. Okay. So that's what we are going to do. A is the resultant matrix. So R into S, S into T. Uh, I mean, sorry, R rows, S columns, S rows, T columns. So your re resultant A matrix is going to be uh, your uh, R rows and then T columns. Okay. Let's quickly go over uh, the ARM code for this. Okay, for this, uh, it's, I'm not going to go line by line for this because uh, uh, it, it's going to, uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward, it's easy to follow. Uh, let's uh, see what we are trying to do here. In this particular example, what we are doing is that we are specifying these three loops. Okay. All I want to point out here is that we are just maintaining one count. Okay. And then whichever count you want to do, you're going to shift it. Okay. If based on which counter you're going to use, you're either going to directly add it to the counter or shifted by 8 or shifted by 16 and then you're going to use the count okay so with this the rest of the code is uh, fairly uh, straightforward okay so with with this we will uh, uh, with just one counter right we can uh, do the entire uh, matrix multiplication okay so we come to the final part of this uh, particular topic uh, so these are other counter loops okay this is a very simple topic uh, so here uh, uh, we are going to see negative indexing. So what what happens if you want to count minus n to zero? It's a very uh, 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 simple thing, right? You do the reverse subtract of n comma zero. This will become zero minus n. So you get minus n. And then you just instead of uh, subtracting now you should do addition, correct? Because it's a negative number, you do addition and then you do branch less than. Okay, it's straightforward. Uh, what if you want to do logarithmic indexing or if you want to count from 2 power n to 1 okay so for example it's like this 16 8 4 2 1 can you do something like this yes you can how can you do this you just use shift if you use shift operation then you can do this so first you shift it by n okay so you get 2 power n okay then you go to the uh, the uh, loop body and then what you're going to do is you shift your i by logical shift right okay by one you shift right by one so you will uh, you you will decrement this it will become 16 8 4 2 1 like that now what if you want to do 2 power n minus 1 to 1 meaning it's 15 7 3 1 it's like that okay so then can you do that yes you can do that how can you do that so now what you have to do in this case is again you just uh, store your you you must still what you have to do is you have to store one to i and then you will have to do a reverse subtract of reverse subtract of i you're going to do uh, i lsl n and then you do minus one Okay, so all you need to do is i shifted by n minus 1. Okay, and then the remaining is the same. You're just going to follow the same thing. Okay, so with this you can do logarithmic indexing. With that we come to the uh, end of uh, this uh, topic as well as end of this uh, uh, module. Okay, so until next time. Thank you.